The Ukrainian army advanced in Glushkovsky district of Russia's Kursk region on September 14 and captured several villages in Tyatkino and north of Sudza, Institute for the Study of War (ISW), reported with reference to a number of Russian sources. Geolocation footage released on September 13 has shown Ukrainian forces advance in Veselo town, southwest of Glushkovo. According to a Russian military blogger, Ukrainian forces have captured the town of Veselo. Russian sources also claimed that Ukrainian troops had advanced west of Medvizhai, southwest of Glushkovo, and in the south of Tetkino, about 25 kilometers southwest of Glushkovo, along the border with Ukraine's Sumy region. Ukrainian forces continued offensive operations near Medvizhai, Veselai, Obakovka in the south of Veselai and Novi Put in south of Veselai on September 13 and 14, with the units of Russia's 56th Airborne Regiment under the 7th Airborne Division and 106th Division repelling attacks by Ukrainian troops in the Glushkovsky district. On Saturday, Ukrainian troops also advanced north of Sudza, with a Russian military blogger claiming that Cherkasy Porekin settlement in north of Sudza was captured by Ukrainians. Ukrainian troops' advance comes after Russia launched a counterattack in Kursk region in recent days following Ukraine's large-scale incursion in early August. Geolocation imagery released on September 14 shows infantry from the Russian Black Sea Fleet operating in Borka settlement southeast of Sudza, indicating that Russian troops have recently advanced further into the settlement. The village of Veselo is located in the rear of the Russian Armed Forces Group. To Glushkovo, where the pontoon crossings of the Russian army are located, 7.5 kilometers by road. So, new units of the Ukrainian army have entered the Kursk region of Russia. Dragon's teeth, set up by the invaders and artillery fire could not stop the fighters advancing in the direction of Glushkovo settlement with a large number of armored combat vehicles. The advancing Ukrainian fighters managed to enter the territory of the settlement by opening fire on the positions of the Russian army nearby. Recall, the Russian Defense Ministry reported that Russian forces have retaken 10 settlements south and southwest of Koronevo since launching counterattacks on the night of 10 to 11 September. These settlements include Apanasovka, Bayakovo, Vishnevka, Viktorovka, Nezipnoi, Gordivka, Krasnoktyabrskoy, Obakovka, Snagist and 10th Oktyabr. However, all of these areas fall within previously claimed limits of Russian advances. Ukrainian officials said Moscow has sent some 30,000 troops into the Kursk region. Two officers with knowledge of the situation said these reinforcements included soldiers from the now dissolved Wagner private military company who the officers believed had been redeployed from West Africa. The Wagner mercenaries were meant to be officially absorbed into the Russian military following the death of Wagner boss Yevgeny Prigozhin last year. But the Ukrainian soldiers operating in Kursk said Wagner fighters were distinguishable from the rest of the Russian troops because they have much better equipment and are better trained than the regular soldiers. Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov also claimed shortly after the start of the incursion that the Chechen Special Forces Unit Akhmet was in the area. In the days leading up to this counterattack, CNN spoke with 14 Ukrainian soldiers from five different units who were deployed to Kursk as part of the incursion. Four were wounded in the operation and are currently recovering in hospitals in Ukraine, while the other 10 are still conducting missions in Russia. They included infantrymen, members of a drone unit, armored vehicle drivers and sappers, or frontline combat engineers. Most have asked to remain anonymous or be identified by their first name and call sign only, given the sensitive nature of the topic and security concerns. All 14 said the Kursk counteroffensive was a difficult operation with casualty rates on par with other parts of the front lines. They said it was getting tougher, five weeks in, and some even questioned the decision to launch the incursion at a time when Ukraine was struggling to defend key towns and cities in the east of the country.